It's that time of the year, time for a summary. Here on this channel, we talk mainly about DevOps, so this will be the top five DevOps related news of 2020. Hi everybody, welcome back to Coder Dave and Merry Christmas if you celebrate it. As you may have seen today, we have a special setup because in this video, I want to go through all the most important DevOps related news of 2020. And also this video will be my last one for 2020. In fact, I will take a short break and I will publish the next video on the 12th of January, 2021. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to learn more about DevOps, especially with Azure DevOps and GitHub, subscribe also because in 2021, this channel will have many news, including podcasts, live streamings, and much more. Just click on the subscribe button below right now and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any new video or new feature. All right, let's go into the news. These are the top five picks for me in this year, but if you have something else that you think I've missed or you consider more important, just let me know and we can discuss about that in the comments. Also, they are not ordered in any way, so if one news comes before or after another, doesn't mean that it's more or less important. The first one I want to talk about is something very recent, but in my opinion, very impactful in the overall DevOps community. I'm talking about the new environments and approvals for GitHub Actions. And even though this may seem a small thing, it's actually not, and it's very important. This feature, in fact, announced during GitHub Universe 2020 just a few weeks ago, marks the official entrance of GitHub Actions in the enterprise CD world. Of course, you could deploy using GitHub Actions even before these features, but now you can fulfill the basic requirements of any organization, including, of course, enterprise, but also, I would say, any real-life project, which is to be able to control the flow of your deployment and release process. And that's not all, because, in fact, thanks to environments, all the operations around deploys and releases are tracked and audited. So now you're actually able to see at any point in time what was deployed, from who and when. The support of environments and approvals is an important step forward for the overall maturity of the platform. And it positioned GitHub Actions to be a strong competitor in the landscape. And if you think that even before this, GitHub Action was the most used CI system in GitHub, well, it says something, doesn't it? The second use in my top five is something that made a lot of noise when it's been announced, and I'm referring to Kubernetes dropping Docker support from the version 1.22. This news wasn't actually a big surprise for the people that are connected to Kubernetes because the development team was planning to do so for about three years already. But nonetheless, as you may have seen, and as I said before, it caused a mediatic earthquake especially in my opinion, because most of the people didn't really understand what this news means. First of all, Kubernetes will continue to run Docker images because they are fully compatible with the OCI, the Open Container Initiative, which Kubernetes supports. Actually, Docker was one of the entities which launched the OCI back in 2015. So regardless how Kubernetes runs its container clusters, Docker images will be able to run on Kubernetes clusters just like they did until now. Because of that, end users will likely not notice any difference in their daily operations, but cluster admins, on the other hand, will probably need to go and change settings and configuration on the clusters. But again, in my opinion, this should not be seen as a catastrophic operation. I don't want to go too deep into the technical reasons why this is happening, but what Kubernetes actually wants to achieve is to remove the need to install Docker and recommend more lightweight alternatives as Docker includes various tools and APIs to allow you to run containers and a lot of other stuff that Kubernetes doesn't really need. So yes, Kubernetes is dropping Docker support, but as I said before, there's no reason to panic because for the most of us, this will likely not change anything. If you've made it this far and you're enjoying this video, hit the like button below and consider subscribing. It will help the channel growing and would mean a lot to me. Right into the next one. When talking about news, those are not always good news, right? And in fact, this is not. I don't know if you've heard about it, but Atlassian is discontinuing all their server products, including Jira, Bitbucket, and Confluence, as part of the program Journey to the Cloud, as they call it. This means that Atlassian will stop selling new server licenses for all their products starting February 2nd, 2021. 
and that will be followed by a complete end of support of all their separate products for both bug fixes and most importantly security fixes in 2024. In practice, this means that you will either have to migrate to their cloud offering or continue using an unsupported product at your own risk. Alassian did say, to be fair, that they will, and I quote, augment their data center products, but I haven't been able to find any more detail about this and even what that means. So if you're an Atlassian user and you're using their server line of product, I highly encourage you to start thinking about migration. And the migration will be either to their cloud offering, or if that's not possible for you, or you want to keep your service on-prem, start thinking of moving to a provider that still offers server products like GitHub Enterprise Server or Azure DevOps Server. Next stop, I wanna talk again about GitHub, but this is not a recent news. In fact, GitHub announced this back in April. Private repositories are now available to all GitHub accounts for free and for an unlimited number of collaborators. And moreover, they've also reduced the price of the Pro and Teams plans. Previously, if your organization wanted to use GitHub for private development, you had to subscribe to one of the paid plans, but now that comes actually free of charge. Teams who need advanced features like code owners, enterprise features like SAML, or personalized support do still need to upgrade to a paid plan. However, the cost of a paid team plan has been reduced to $4 per user per month from the original $9 per user per month. This was an amazing news back in April, and in my opinion, it still is. I think that the limitation on private repos was always a uh, adoption blocker for GitHub, but now that this is not there anymore, many more developers and teams have and will join the platform, contribute to open source, and more importantly, adopt inner source as part of their set of practices. Thank you, GitHub. The last news in my top 20 is not so much of a news, but rather a trend. In fact, 2020 has seen a massive increase in DevOps adoption across the board. And I don't know if it's because of the ongoing pandemic or because the 2020 marked a milestone in the maturity of the market, but indeed it happened. Throughout the year, I had many discussions, presentations and demos to individuals, teams and organizations that wanted to either start using DevOps or take a step forward in their DevOps transformation, and so did my colleagues. If we take a look at the DevOps survey for 2020 presented by the DevOps Institute, we can see that DevOps adoption has grown substantially, and so have Agile and SRE adoption. And let's take a look at the GitHub's State of the Octoverse report. This year has seen an incredible spike in new repos creation. In May, over 40% more repositories were created compared to last year, and since then, Roughly 25% more open source repositories have been created compared to the same time last year. Moreover, if we talk about development, we can see that there has been a huge increase in both code push volume and number of pull requests compared to 2019. And this is true also for the security side of DevOps. According to the State of DevOps report 2020, the level of security integration this year is higher than it was in 2019, especially in the levels 3 and 4. You can find all the links for these reports in the video description below should you want to read them by yourself and I encourage you to do so because they are full of useful information. All right, these were the top five DevOps related news for me. And as I said before, let me know in the comment section below if I've missed something you consider important. Remember that this will be my last video for 2020 and I'll see you all on the 12th of January, 2021. Also with this, I want to take the occasion to wish you all a prosperous new year, and I hope that 2021 will bring you joy. Once again, thank you very much for the support you show to this channel. All of this would not be possible if not for you. You all made my year. And belated Christmas. Eh? Many news on this channel, including podcast, including. Please hit the like button below and subscribe. So but this is not a res recent. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you next year here on Coder Dave.